Good afternoon and welcome back to the garden. Now at the moment it's beautiful and sunny when we're in the bottom greenhouse. Believe it or not when we walked down here it was raining quite hard so we're in that sort of April shower sort of weather now where you'll get sunshine and then you get a shower which is good for the garden so we have some work to do outside we'll see if we can do it a little later and then tag it to the end of this one in the meantime i'm going to set some seeds quite a few seeds this week actually we're getting into where we really need to get the cabbages and the peas etc planted so we can get them out now the ground's warming and i've actually i was out there weeding not so much this end but in the chicken garden and I saw some ants around it's a bit early for ants but they're on the move with this warm weather let's have a look at these seeds this is cabbage calibos this will be planted now but it won't be ready until the autumn this one is jade jade is a smaller cabbage but that one will be ready oh November time just before the calibos mini coal that's a good cabbage that is you'll have it's a small cabbage but they're solid and good for your coleslaws etc so that normally comes in a few weeks so we'll have those all through the summer and then we've got the cauliflower clapton we always tend to grow this one we'll plant it now it'll be ready Oh, October time, October, November. So again, you're going into that cold weather where you want those. This is sweet corn, Swift. It's an F1. We grew this last year. It did very, very well. We had a good crop off it. So, and it was an early crop. So we'll do that one again. Calabrese, another one we've had good success with on here. Parthenon. It's a hybrid. Uh, towards the end of summer or into next year that'll, that'll uh, flower up. Beetroot, this is Monita, this is the this beetroot seed where you'll get one beetroot per seed normally if you use if you use bolt hardy you'll get several seedlings per seed this one you get one seedling per seed which makes it better for you haven't got to thin them down so much I'm putting two lots of peas in this is one that Gemma gave me actually it's the sugar pea but we'll put those in and meteor which is one of the hardiest of the peas we'll put that in that only gets 30 inches high now with the peas, I'll, especially the meteor, which is very hardy, I'll put half into the garden. I'm going to put them in the shade hole. We've got some spare ground in there. Now that's the fruit cage, and then half in pots, liner pots. So I've got back up if one or the other fails. We want about twenty. So we need to put about 30 seed in, so it's a fair bit. Now these are the calibos, we'll put these straight in the normal way like we do all the time. The compost, uh, the compost is pre-wetted so we we'll just, we don't need an awful lot. But if you don't put plenty in and they don't grow so well then we'll be short come autumn but there'll be enough in there put this on same as always about quarter of an inch should do it and that will keep that compost nice and moist on top and the seeds will actually germinate a bit better like that. So we'll do them all and then we'll wet them all together. Mini coal, we only get 75 seed of mini coal. Now I do want to do a double set of mini coal because they do 
they do mature quite quick and they say they're not too big cabbages hence the quicker whoa I thought I'd won the jackpot then when they all came out like that. There we go. Just enough to start them off. That's it. Bit of a Michelite on top. And I use these fruit containers, there's holes in the side and I don't fill them and do you know that seed seems to germinate very quickly in them and I've had no problems with them up to now so I should continue. Mini coal. Right, I'll do the other two and then I'll show you them being watered. There you are then, there the seeds set we just need to give them a good watering over the top now get it wet first and then you can put plenty of water on that make you like we've had good germination this year on everything mind you except for the broad beans is a bit effy but everything else is germinated very well there's not much left in the propagator, that's why we didn't show you it just yet. These won't go in the propagator, they'll germinate quite well down here. In the propagator there's mainly just the cucumbers. There we go, we'll just let that soak for a few minutes and then we'll give it another, another drink. Now as you can see the greenhouse is filling up now lots of seedlings but we'll take you through it later and show you what we've got of each variety now if you look at the tomatoes you can see a little bit of lime in because it's, it's lightness on the one or two of the leaves it's not wanting anything no magnesium deficiency or anything like that now i think it's like that because the last three three and a half days I've had fleeces over these because it's been so cold and wet and I didn't want the tomatoes to get cold so I kept fleeces on day and night and obviously they've missed that little bit of light and they're just turning a bit to that lime colour but they'll be fine they'll soon come back it's just starting to rain again now so we'll try and get out because I want to feed the garlic I want to show you what I've done about setting the parsnips and the carrots but not in the rain I'm afraid we'll, we'll perhaps try later on today if not it'll be tomorrow Hello and good afternoon and welcome back to the garden it's Sunday afternoon and we've had to wait for the garden to dry out a little before we came to film the what we've done to the carrots and the parsnips and putting the tree grease on every time we set off to do this this last week it's absolutely tipped it down with rain but yesterday was a good windy day so it's dried the top of the garden out so we are able to do a little bit today now what i've done to put the parsnips in i've pushed the uh, this old shaft, spade shaft that snapped off at some stage, into the ground about, oh, that much, about a good 12 inches. Give it a, a good roll round and then I filled each hole up with compost. It was poor compost, it weren't strong compost, so within three, three weeks, maybe four weeks, it'll be finished. So hopefully they won't divide they'll just follow that down now once i've filled it up with compost i've put four seeds in the top of each and then i've put a cap of the compost on top 
and then if and when they germinate I should try and leave one plant in each hole so hopefully we'll get some decent parsnips. I've left three to do at this end and I'll try and drop four seeds in each. It's these jobs where you need more delicate hands than these old things, but we'll try our best. That's five, so now it's four. And four in there. Notoriously bad for germination, sometimes you don't get none at all. But I always use fresh seed, and what seeds left will be discarded I'm afraid. When you're doing your seed not to get too many out at once and then I'm not picking too many up. Three and one. You don't want to go four. So that's the four. That's 12 seed in that'll do there. These are tender and true. I do believe I haven't grown them before but when I did grow them they was like that but that's the soil not the seed then what I've done I've taken this oh you can see it's not the best of compost but it'll do for this and I put a good pile on top and just press them down and to grow good parsnips this is done if you've got some nice sandy soil there's a, a farm or oh, it must be two miles up the lane that is on really sandy land and he grows beautiful parsnips by the lorry load and carrots I saw the carrots going past this last year oh and they look beautiful now I have set five rows of carrots but I've left the centre of this last row just to show you how I did it. What I did for the carrots this year, I put the spade full in all the way to the top, a full depth and then I gave it a good waggling and then the slit that I left which was 10 inches, 12 inches deep I filled up with the compost obviously it was a lot wider than that but this particular plot is very clay so I wouldn't be able to do it on there there'll be more come out on the spade than what, to, what I'll be able to cope with I have left between these two labels the old labels are just pushed in to show that's the space I left so I could show you how I did as you know, we don't want to put carrots in very thick. So I don't put many in my hand, so I can't put too many in. Very difficult when you, your fingers don't work very well. But just keep trying. It's slow, but it'll be worth it. And it always happens that just as you start getting it right, you get a group fall out. So it spoils it a little bit. Right there, look. Now I want to avoid the wind if possible. And this has only been done for two, three days at the max and there's weeds actually starting to grow in it already look. I hope the carrots come up as quick as the weeds if they come up should do that's it now same again with the same compost and just line it off they say that carrots outdoor want to be 
half an inch deep if you're using soil so I would assume using the compost to be the same so we'll give them half inch that's nearly there look half inch we can just press those down Now those rows we put in there, pardon me, that's called resistor fly. Now that's this little bed filled up with parsnips and carrots. If there's going to be a cold spell or if you think oh, it's getting a bit cold, the best thing to do now is lay a fleece over it and then leave that fleece on it until everything's germinated. I still might do it yet, I haven't decided and I'll have to get some more fleece if I'm going to do it but if I do do it I'll show you. Now we're going to get this tree grease on, the plum tree will go down to it but I have done the apple tree this morning as you can see and then tidied around it. Now just before we put the tree grease on we'll get this uh, garlic and onions fertilized ready for their spring growth now they're not looking too bad but we'll just need to give them a booster especially now the ground's getting warm and if we do it the next rain which should be april showers should also wash it in for us now what i'm using is blood fish and bone but I'm actually putting a little bit more dried blood into it to give it a little bit more nitrogen. There's your blood fish and bone. What I find is if you put this on summer when the ants are about, you'll find that the ants will come and pick this up and take it off to the nest. Must be the bone in it that they're after. And this is the dried blood. Uh, put about that much in look. now don't be squeamish it's nice and dry but it's 10% nitrogen so we'll put some in we won't put a lot in now I couldn't find the stick so I've had to use the scissors to mix it up now there are alternatives to blood fish and bones so if you don't like using these fertilizers there's plenty available but remember, always read the packet first before you buy it. I'll just do these two end rows with you to show you how I do it. It's quite simple. I just get it sprinkling. It doesn't need a lot. It is quite strong. And try and get a little bit between as well. Like that. And then we'll rake it all in together then the sun's in a bit bad angle for us at the moment so I think you need a little bit more between the plants because you'll have two roots trying to get to it and if you haven't got a fair bit in there it won't grow so well. A little bit more down here. Look. There you go. I use the small four prong because I know it won't go deep in the ground because we don't want to go deep and damage any of the roots. The goat cross first, but it's a little bit wet but it is movable so it'll, it'll mix it as it goes. Can you see? We do this way first. Look at that stem. 
We don't want that. Still a little bit sticky, but we are getting it. I don't know if you can hear in the background, but the motorway is over there on the east and the wind is blowing from the east, so we get a little bit of motorway sound. Once I've done between them like that and scattered the bone meal etc about, then we just go straight down the rows now. Remember don't get too close to your garlic, we don't damage it. For the amount of rain we've had this is this is turning nicer this is please with that. I'm not going deep at all and I'm not going too close to the garlic look. Missed that one right. Right up to the corner, make it look nice. And then down the row, I'll do it from this side and then I go that side because I don't really want to walk on it if I can help it. Uh, a little bit on this end. Uh, that's that two rows done yeah. now that's those two rows I wanted to show you being done now because we've got this good weather I'm going to do the whole lot we'll do the onions which are done exactly the same and then I can show you this whole onion and garlic plot completed ready for growing on now as you can see the onions and the garlic have all been fertilized now the onions i couldn't get as close as i might have done if i had the onion hoe obviously i'll have to go through those if there's any weed grows but everything's done now in there the only thing to remember and it's quite important is when you've been handling these fertilizers wash your hands thoroughly okay don't forget we're just going to put the fruit tree grease on the plum now we're late i'm sorry about this it should have been done a while ago the plum is just breaking into flower so i certainly don't want any frost hard frost in the mornings now else it'll be another plumless year The first thing to remember with tree grease is find a very old pair of gloves because if you get too much grease on them you won't be using them again. I've actually got an odd pair on that I found in the shed. One, well, they're both right hands so I've got one on in the wrong hand but it doesn't matter for tree grease. Now as you see you don't get an awful lot but it does go a long way. Well, as you can see there's quite a bit on it over the years but it's lost its stickiness so what I find is if you go round and round with the old brush I've had the same brush for years as you can see if you go round and round it gets it into all the crevices better I say you don't really want it on your hands round and round up and then when you finish plaster it on it goes quite a long way right I'll do the other side and we do put it on the apple I've already done that one as I told you now last week the beginning of April we used the last of the apples off that tree that had been in storage in the shed 
so really that's not so bad and there weren't many there's an odd maggot in it but hardly any really so the tree grease does work and while we was using the last of the apples Dad told me we've used the last of the onion so we're onion and apple it now at the moment we might be able to manage without the apples but we will have to purchase some ones. I don't really want to knock any blossom off we could have but and say it goes quite away but it's like everything else you don't want to waste it now that's the tree grease on the plum and I've raked right around I haven't put any fertiliser on it because we manured it well for the winter which is all gone in now so that's what we call job done the bottom greenhouse is okay I have watered it this morning everything's looking good in the sunshine but let's hope there's not any hard frost for the next few days now that's brought you up to date with what we've done on the garden and in the greenhouses and so that'll be it for now in a day or so with more seeds to put in and we really need to plan about putting the potatoes in etc because it's April two weeks I should be looking to get them in especially the first earlies so take care everyone and we'll see you soon. Bye now.